so yeah, thank you so much. Um, my name is Alec. I'm I'm 17. I'm from Southern California. It's it's really so exciting to to be here with this energy. There's just the the movement that uh, you know PowerShift has has created and is fueling and is a part of is just so exciting. And and you know I can just feel the energy here. Like something is about to to to. I mean something in a lot of ways things have already been pushing through, but it's just. You know, you can feel it. <laughs> so, just thank you so much for for having me and for working so hard to 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 have me here. It's just, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah. Shortly after I got started, when I was 13, I, I decided I I made, I made that commitment to stop global warming within my lifetime. <laughs> it was, you know, when I made that commitment, I partly meant it. There's there's not supposed to be a slide. It's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that happens all the time. <laughs> um, so when I made that commitment, I, I, you know, I partly meant it as just kind of like a tongue-in-cheek way to, to show my dedication for this work and dedication for this movement or whatever. But on the other hand, I was I was dead serious, and I <laughs> still am, I guess. Um, because as the great environmentalist David Brower once said, I'm always impressed with what young people can do before older people tell them it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's safe to say that all of us here are, are, are super passionate about, about putting an end to climate change. Uh, and I also think a lot of us are, are, you know, struggle with the fact that if you think about it rationally, you know, our, our goals are, are like practically impossible. It's like, I don't know, but honestly, if you really think about it, everything is, is impossible uh, until it happens. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and through my journey as an activist, I've, I've begun to kind of look at what does that actually look like? Like, what does it mean to stop global warming in my lifetime or whatever? What does it mean to, to transition to a sustainable and just society and, and all that? And I've begun to notice all these little things that we all do just, just every day in, in, a, in our own lifestyles without even really questioning it. You know, we live in a world where, where you can buy a, a $4 cup of coffee made with beans grown in Colombia and... and uh, sprinkled with cinnamon from Sri Lanka, you know, a world where we'd rather drive our cars three blocks to the grocery store than, than walk or ride our bikes, a, a world where, you know, a world that views us only as, as consumers to, to be played and the earth only as a, a resource to be conquered, <laughs> a world where we, we turn on the lights and, and wash our clothes and use heaps of electronics without even uh, questioning it. You know, we live in a world where we're, where we believe that our government's acting with our well-being in mind, where we're told to believe that corporations are, are in it to make our lives better, um, I guess. <laughs> and, and where we may not agree with the fact that putting gasoline into our car puts toxic chemicals into the air, but we still do it every single day, simply because that's just the way things are. <laughs> oh, that, that broke. That was supposed to be slowly moving while I was talking. Now I can't. It <laughs> doesn't really matter. <laughs> Simply because that's just the way things are. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Brothers and, and sisters, we are the victims of a great sickness. A sickness felt by many but expressed by, by very few. A sickness slowly spreading, convulsing, flowing, reaching into the deepest corners of our minds, and crawling underneath our skin, hovering over our heads, whispering constantly into our ears, lashing out when threatened, hiding, invisible, denying, 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 denying. It is a sickness programmed into our brains from, from birth, reinforced in schools, blasted through televisions, funded by corporations, providing funding for corporations, latching, scraping, feeding, holding, just keep shopping, just keep shopping, the world is yours, feel free to take what you want, resent the people in classes above you, pity the ones in classes below you, you are inadequate, you are inadequate, buy this, eat this, apply this directly to your forehead, don't breathe in, don't breathe out, welcome to limbo. Safety. <laughs> Comfort. Ignore the words of, of the boy up on the stage. Nod your head in agreement, but ignore what he says. Denial, 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 denial. Look this way. Look that way. Look through these glasses. They're covered in dust because that... Uh, look through these glasses. They're covered in dust, but that's okay because the world out there is frightening. Run away from frightening. Run away from sadness. Never cry. Never cry. Fear death. Never, ever cry. 
Reproduce but feel ashamed about it. Keep your secrets to yourself. Love doesn't exist. Just keep shopping. Maybe one day you'll have as much money as those people on the screen. Maybe one day you can afford Photoshop to get rid of those blemishes on your face. Select the clone stamp tool and wipe those tools away. <laughs> Tears away. <laughs> Just keep shopping. Just keep shopping. Buy this hybrid car. It gets 60 miles per gallon. Now you can drive wherever you want to. Install this solar water heater. Spend four hours in the shower without feeling guilty. 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 You are guilty. You are filthy. You are broken, shattered. You have been torn into pieces. But hey, just go get drunk. It'll all become better. Just keep shopping. A new shirt will mend that shattered mind. Just keep playing that game. Just one more minute. I can stop whenever I want to. Those antidepressants aren't going to hold you for long. Quickly, quickly, hurry up. You're going to be late for that meeting. What the hell? Look at this traffic. My life is worthless. I'm only trying to provide for my family. How dare you threaten me? Boy, on the stage, you're saying that I'm worthless, but you don't even know my name. Shut up, shut up. Get out of my head. Just keep shopping. Just keep shopping. We are the 99, but we wish we were the one. We re 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 resent the people in classes above you. We wish we could have it all for ourselves. If we were multi-billionaires, would we be marching in the streets down below? <laughs> step, <laughs> step into to, to this sickness. You know, feel it, feel it crawling, feel it feeding. Notice how it how it feels threatened. Be with it. Sit with it. You know, watch it. Listen to it. Breathe. Pay attention to your breathing. <laughs> just be silent and, and, and feel. Just, just embody that sickness. Don't shut anything out. Let every thought in, every emotion in. Becoming aware of this parasite and, and listening to it is the first step in, in breaking free. <laughs> is there any way I could get some water? That would be awesome. That's kind of off subject, but like... Oh, yeah? You, you are my eternal savior. I am grateful to you forever. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Um, so we, we, we have all fallen victim to this sickness. Um, it, was, it was passed on to us by our parents and our grandparents and, and their parents and grandparents before them and their parents and grandparents before them. And the line of inheritance continues back for, for 10,000 years you know, through the Industrial Revolution, through the abolition of slavery, the American Revolution, all the world wars, the invention of the telescope, Hitler's genocide, Columbus's genocide, Beethoven's fifth, the rule of Napoleon, the death of Blackbeard, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, the outlawing of torture, the introduction of torture, the expedition of Lewis and Clark, the rise and fall of the Vikings, the murder of Julius Caesar, the birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the birth and death of Socrates, the birth and death of the Buddha. <laughs> the Little Ice Age, the Big Ice Age, the, the construction of stone, Stonehenge, the Great Pyramids of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, all the way back to just before the beginning of what we call modern civilization. <laughs> That's where our, our, our sickness first began. <laughs> you know, modern, modern human beings, um, homo sapiens sapiens, um, have been on this planet for more than 250,000 years, just in, in this form, what we, we call modern humans. And for the vast majority of that time, we, we complied with the same natural laws as, as every other species on the planet. You know, we, we lived in small communities, we, we hunted for our food, grew basic crops to, to sustain our families, we, we danced, we laughed, we played music, created things, made tools, drew pictures, and, and were happy with our situation. <laughs> we lived like that for, for really a good 240,000 years. And then something happened. <laughs> Um, according to, to one theory, a period of intense aridification or desertification or whatever forced people to kind of move toward water um, and, and that's where they ran into all these people from other, other tribes and they started building these, these communities. Um, according to another human, a, a certain, according to another theory, <laughs> uh, a certain human decided to, to eat from the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. And, and, which transformed the species from a state of innocent obedience to God, to guilty, broken disobedience. Um, historical evidence points towards something known as the, the Neolithic Revolution, when humans made the transition from hunter-gatherer cultures to, to totalitarian agriculture and complex societies. But really, no matter which theory you, you, you subscribe to, at some point, human beings decided that we were somehow exempt from the laws of nature. 
somehow we, somewhere around 10,000 years ago, our, our ancestors who had been living sustainably for a really long time decided that, that one group of people, you know, that, that their way of living was the one and best way to live for everybody. And, and over the next few centuries, one by one, these, these small, healthy communities were replaced by large societies whose goal was to impose their way of living onto every other group of people on the planet. <laughs> this is the, the, the birth of our sickness. This is when we decided that the earth was given to man as, as a present for him to do whatever he pleases with. We decided that human beings are the ultimate end product of, of all of evolution and that we have every right to destroy all the natural landscapes we can get our hands on. Fast forward all the way to the present and here we are. You know, this, this sickness has been, has been growing and growing and growing for 10,000 years, taking over our entire society, seeping deep into the souls of, of every last person, person fortunate enough to, to call Western civilization their home. You know, we, we, we've conquered well over 90% of all the, the healthy hunter-gatherer cultures on the planet. We've, we've used up almost all the oil stored in the ground. We've ripped out grotesquely large areas of, of forests, built hundred-story skyscrapers, and we're still desperately trying to impose our, our way of living onto every last person of Earth, all in the name of, of growth and progress. Um, and the sickness has been spreading for, for a long time, you know, invisibly tearing at, at our souls without much notice, really. And, and in the past, even though in a lot of ways it's resulted in wars and genocides and all that, it's been kind of relatively harmless on, on a global level. That is until now. You know, really, for, for the first time in human history, our species is actually on the verge of extinction. At, at, at the hand of every one of us and the decisions that we make every day. You know, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, our societies become hopelessly addicted to fossil fuels. And scientists and economists and activists and Bill McKibben <laughs> have been warning us, desperately warning us, starting as early as, as the mid-1800s. Maybe not Bill McKibben, but other guys. <laughs> uh, but really, to, to, to very little avail. In, in a lot of ways, we're still continuing to move backwards in the fight against climate change. And now the, the consequences we've been warned about time and time again have, have begun to show themselves. As you're all very aware, you know, just, just in the last couple of years, forests have been ravaged and homes destroyed by, by intense wildfires. Lives and livelihoods have been, been lost to unimaginably intense flooding. The, the world's most powerful and, and immensely vast Ice sheets have begun to, to be reduced to shallow pools and, and floating icebergs melting into the cold ocean faster than anyone could predict. You know, extreme drought has crippled entire nations, started wars, deprived millions of people of the most basic requirements for survival. Island nations such as the Maldives have begun to experience the, the, the practically irreversible effects of, of sea level rise. And here in the US, the, the people we've elected to take care of our country, have decided to just slide all of these effects underneath the rug and, and, and hope that it'll all go away if, if, if the people can, can remain distracted for long enough. You know, the, the sickness of our culture is, is making itself known in devastating ways. And I believe climate change is just a, a, a simply a symptom of this, this deep-seated sickness. It's just a symptom of the disease. Um, it is, however, <laughs> the, the sickness that's going to kill us if nothing's done to stop it. <laughs> and not only is the situation getting worse and worse every day, but, but as we're all well aware, there, there are so many people with so much money just, just determined to do whatever they possibly can to halt any progress that, that we're pushing for, any progress that's made simply to, to protect profits and power, making sure that the money flows in just as fast as the oil flows out. <laughs> it's actually pretty much illegal in our country for, for a corporation to make a decision for the sake of anything other than increased profits. You know, the, the, the top five oil companies alone made $137 billion in profits just in the fourth quarter of 2011. That's, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll end it. Climate, you know, climate change is, is, is always resisted the most by the people who, who profit from the way things are. They, they, and they're not going to give up easily. You know, we, we 
pretty much are literally coming against the, the biggest opponents on earth, the people with the most money, the people with the most power, you know, even consumerism itself. Um, and the way that I see it, we've, we've waited far too long to, to rely on solutions like riding bikes and, and buying solar panels. You know, I believe if we actually want to solve climate change, we need to confront and, and heal the sickness of our culture at, at, at the very core. Um, in so many ways, humanity is finally reaching the point where either the sickness has to die or we will. It seems impossible, but yes, everything is impossible until it happens. <laughs> Imagine that we're all uh, sitting on a boat going down a river. It all seems fine and, and, and carefree. Everyone is just kind of enjoying themselves, looking out at the scenery, uh, just dense rainforest. We're in the middle of a rainforest. Um, getting another cup of, of Colombian coffee, you know, pouring more and more gasoline into the engine to, to keep us pushing forward. It's a huge ship, like a cruise liner. Um, <laughs> but what a lot of people don't realize is that up ahead, just a few miles down the river, hidden behind a, a, a dense layer of fog, is a waterfall. <laughs> a, a massive, powerful waterfall that'll surely be the demise of this, this fancy boat and everyone on it. <laughs> We're already beginning to, to run into some, some rough water and, and maybe a few jagged rocks, but the captain is, is assuring us that it's okay, there's nothing to worry about, it's all fine. Um, there are a few people who can, who can see what's coming up ahead, who can, who can hear the deafening roar that, that the rest have, have somehow drowned out with their shallow conversations <laughs> and are trying to, to warn us all about, about the impending disaster. You know, some are running around telling everyone to, to buy a reusable mug for their coffee or stop throwing their trash over the side of the boat and here use this trash can instead. Um, some are arguing with the people who manage the fuel on the boat, trying to like convince them to desperately to use to switch to biodiesel, um, even though we'll still keep moving forward. Um, some are pounding on the door of the captain with with hopes of just convincing him to turn the boat around, even though the the water is beginning to pick up speed. Some people are are jabbing sticks and and paddles into the water to try to turn the boat around all on their own. Um, a few are even organizing marches to voice their concern, and you know some have just. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, some have just, just, you know, given up entirely and decided to, to enjoy themselves while they still have the chance. You know, all the while we, we, we still keep pushing forward. We still keep powering closer and closer and closer to that fog drenched waterfall. And I think that like, <laughs> I think we, we pretty much only have two options if we want to survive, you know, either we figure out a way to shift the course of this river entirely and, and, and begin to head in a new direction and, and continue on our merry way. <laughs> or, if that doesn't work, we need to jump out and swim to shore and watch our, our beloved boat tumble off the edge of the cliff and into the abyss. <laughs> you know, this is the, the situation that we're in now. And yeah, I believe that the only way we'll be able to, to get out of this mess is, is to break free from our sickness entirely. Just, just jump out. And that, that basically means, you know, we need to learn to value nature and, and the well-being of future generations more than we value money and convenience. We need to, to remember what it truly means to be human and alive, how, how it feels to be connected and part of the earth, how it feels to be connected to, to each other. We need to, to lift this, this veil of fog, hiding the reality that we're in the process of destroying ourselves. And we need to either change the course of this river and begin to head in a new direction, or jump ship and, and start anew. <laughs> because whether we like it or not, we're quickly reaching the end, you know, the end of, of all that we've depended on for generations. We, we're, we're about to enter into a period of death and, you know, the, the Medical, metaphorical death as well as physical death. You know, the, the, the death of oil, the death of reason, the death of convenience, and with all of these, the death of our sickness. And in all of nature, wherever there is death, wherever there is an end, there will always be rebirth. It's only a, a symptom of our sickness that we regard death with, with fear and avoidance. Death equals growth. Every end is, is also a beginning. It needs to be dark 
to see the light. Oops. And now comes the part where, where we get to envision what this new world looks like. You know, what does it look like to, to break free from our sickness with, with our hands in the air, proclaiming to the world that we have overcome? <laughs> well, that, that, and this is the, the, the fun part. I believe that once we've had this emotional, this, 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 this deep emotional awakening, uh, awakening, once we've broken out of the sickness within our own minds, then these, these changes in our lives and in our society will, will naturally follow. Just, just, just imagine, imagine what that would look like. Imagine a, a world where instead of running our lives off of fossil fuels, alternative energy is, will simply be referred to as, as energy. Instead of filling our, our, our these wise old mountains with, with, with dynamite and hatred and, and blasting apart their souls in search of, of, of black rocks, we will simply understand that we are just one part of nature, we are just as much of a, a, a part of nature as, as the sun and the trees and, and every little last piece of fungus on the ground. <laughs> Instead of being controlled by this, this, this black petroleum addiction and, and dodging gas stations on every corner, we will not only drive cars completely devoid of oil, but we will cease driving altogether, developing deeply connected, tightly knit communities where we'll be able to, to recount the, the dreams and life stories of every one of our neighbors as if they were the dreams and life stories of ourselves. And instead of being a a attacked by buildings twice as tall as, as the tallest redwood trees erected to, to hold thousands upon thousands of, of unhappy cubicle-ridden human beings, <laughs> buildings will at the very least be designed to function seamlessly and, and in harmony with nature and, and every human being will be respected for, for their unique talents and, and passions. <laughs> we'll, we will finally be at peace with, with, with ourselves, with, with each other, with, with all of nature. <laughs> this future is possible. <laughs> in fact, this kind of transition is, has even been done before. About 300 years ago, uh, the people of Japan were feeling the sickness in, in, a, in a, an immediate way. They were facing food and water and energy shortages, massive deforestation, overpopulation, overdependence on the outside world to survive. And then, in a radical shift, they, they completely transformed everything they did. They broke free from their sickness and they, they created a completely sustainable society. <laughs> they were completely 100% self-sufficient and, and their forests grew back and population didn't rise at all for a hundred years and, and they were happier than they'd ever been. <laughs> and during that time, a, a Zen saying came about or became popular that looks like this. <laughs> it's translated as, I know what just enough is. <laughs> I know what just enough is. This, this, this was it. This simple saying defined with, with clarity and, and conviction, their awakening. And this is exactly the kind of awakening we need now. We have to be, be done with this mindless mantra of, of more, more, more control, more power, more, more, more. We simply just have to step back and, and learn what just enough is. <laughs> once we realize this, once we begin to live in a way that understands that more is, is not always better, and that the actions we take really do affect future generations, only then will we, will we be able to solve these, these huge problems that we're facing. And I believe that, that it's us, the youth, who can be the ones to, to bring this message about. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm realizing that I'm running out of time. Am I correct in that? Uh, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll be quick. Um, you all pretty much agree that it's our generation who's gonna solve this, right? Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> so so I, I, can, I can go quickly through that slide, basically. We're, you know, we're affected most by, by climate change. We, I feel like we all have this kind of like inherent sense that, that we are called to change the world, even, even if some of us don't realize it. And I believe that, that we can be the ones to, to lead the way in creating something new. You know, the time has come for the youth to stand up for what we know is right. <laughs> yes, uh, because it, it, it's really become clear that that our government is not protecting the, the land and the water and the, and the atmosphere that we as youth need to survive. And this is really an injustice. And something I didn't realize until a couple years ago, our government actually has 
legal responsibility to protect the planet for future generations. Isn't that like weird? <laughs> and, uh, under, <laughs> um, and I feel like the time has now come <laughs> to, to hold our government accountable for their lack of action, for failing to protect this planet. <laughs> Uh, so I'm joining with youth around the world to, to take legal action and, and bring our case to the courts. Um, we're basically suing the government for allowing money and power to be more valuable than, than our survival. And uh, I'm the plaintiff for, yes, I'm a, a, a plaintiff for the federal case against uh, the U.S. government. And we're taking action in, uh, in all 50 states. John, where's John? He's here. There he is. John is the plaintiff um, here in Montana. And... and for, for, for the case here and, and uh, a few of the lawyers who are working with us are, are, are in the room too and thank you guys just so much for, for, for that. This is really amazing. You know, we're, we're demanding that, that our government recognize the atmosphere as, as a, a public trust that needs to be protected for, for future generations. We're, we're demanding that they commit to developing a plan to reduce carbon dioxide every year uh, based on this plan that, that Dr. James Hansen and, and a group of scientists have developed that says like in order to get to 350 parts per million by the end of this century we need to start reducing carbon 6% every year and, and along with like 100 gigatons of sequestration which is just like a lot of trees. Um, <laughs> but yeah and, and it's actually there, there's a lot of things happening with that now I'm, I'm there's a hearing next month i think um and it's now not only the u.s government that we're that we're up against but just in the past month the the national association of manufacturers um has asked to be a, a co-defendant in the federal case um and this is a group cited with with the honor of of defeating every attempt um the past few years of passing any kind of, of climate legislation. Um, and now they're, they're trying to join forces with the federal government um, to oppose me and a group of 12 youth from around the country. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, they, they see us as a threat, man. <laughs> Maybe even they can feel the power shifting. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> um, but we're not just standing up in the courts. You know, we are standing up in the streets as well. <laughs> I'm going to skip this part because throughout history, people organized marches. There's lots of marches happening now. And bam. <laughs> um, you know, we are really banding together as a generation to let the world know that climate change isn't about money. It's, it's not about power. It's not about convenience. It's about our survival. It's, it's about the future of, of this and every generation to come. And, it, and it's, it's, it's all, you know, this movement has been happening for a while and, and the work that all you guys are doing is, is, is fueling it amazingly. And, and um, I and my organization actually planned this event last year called the, the I Matter March. Um, you know, we, or, the, there were, we the youth <laughs> organized over 160 marches in, in 43 countries, um, which isn't 15,000 marches in 189 countries. I, I always just feel really humbled hearing Bill McKibben talk. Um, <laughs> but it's all part of the same movement. And it's, it's, it's been, you know, it's just, just seeing these pictures coming from, from, you know, everywhere from San Francisco to Vermont to Nicaragua to Costa Rica to Bangladesh to Cancun, Mexico to Pakistan. <laughs> you know, we, the, the, the youngest generation have have stood up to make our voices heard. There was a march going up Mount Everest. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Um, and there was, there was one led by the 16-year-old the son of an oil executive in Kuwait. Um, he got in huge trouble with his dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is great. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, and there was also an awesome march here in, in Missoula. And I guess the person who organized that is, is not here, right? Was anyone here part of organizing that? Nobody? Well, let's, um, well, thank you. There, I bet there are people here. You're just not taking credit for it. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> so now is the time to continue this movement. And, um, you know, we're going to be marching again this Earth Day, um, Earth Day this year to basically acknowledge and, and confront the, the denier in all of us. You know, we're, we're calling it the, the rally to celebrate global warming um, or the I don't matter march. Um, and we're basically just, just embodying our sickness with, with signs like these um, in order to, to acknowledge it and really take the first step in breaking free. I actually, the, here's a list of all the other ideas for signs. It's like, <laughs> clean air was so last year. Um, 
I hate beautiful beaches. Oil companies care. Give generously to oil companies. Um, super storms, super cool. <laughs> Tropical islands aren't flooding, they're just taking a bath. <laughs> Dust bowls are fun. Awesome, up with sea levels. Yeah. <laughs> Antarctica, too cold for too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're basically just, just embodying that, that mindset, basically just to kind of point out on one hand how ridiculous it is, um, and also just to, to um, be able to make the first step in, in breaking free from that. Um, and yeah, I invite you all to organize a, a global warming support rally. Um, wherever you wherever you can um, and just kind of connect the dots with the the 350 action in May and, and just continue to, to fuel this movement it's really all connected it's all the same the uh, energy you know we really we, we must refuse to to ever ever back down <laughs> because we the youth have the the moral authority to be able to call out these flaws we we have the the power to, to embody this sickness and and bring on the the, the fire that'll allow for a new way Because we are the voiceless, the, the dismissible, the, underwhel the overwhelmed majority, minority. Okay. We are the voiceless, <laughs> the dismissible, the overwhelmed minority. And we've decided now's the time to take our place in the world once and for all. No one expects us, no one sees us coming, no one has the words to describe what is happening to them. This is not your land, nor is it mine, nor is it anybody's. From the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters, your time has run dry like the tears of indigenous mothers. The world is not yours. You belong to the land, so clap your hands. Clap your hands. <laughs> and also clap the hands. <laughs> and also clap the hands of, of your sisters and your brothers. The world is filled with wonder. You know you love one another. Raise your voice into the sky and bring down the thunder. Let the flames of the awakened turn the trees into burnt lumber. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are waiting no longer. We refuse to stop until the world is torn asunder. We sing subconscious songs, both joyful and somber. We will spread like a virus. We will tear apart like cancer. We will hold our fathers to their words. We will crush their mindless banter. We are the fire. We are alive. We will light every lantern. We will rise from the ashes of your burnt perfect future. We are lonely, we are, we are scared, we are depressed, and we are waiting for the time of the fire, for the secretly awakened to come alive. We are artists raised to think what we know not to be true. We are trained in the art of broken pyroclastic flows, rising from volcanoes, breaking through the windows of the damned, the godforsaken, the, over, the underwhelmed majority. The time of the fire is here, sisters and brothers. We are the awakened ones the fearless, the indomitable minority. And we've decided now's the time to take our place in the world once and for all. <laughs> I, <laughs> I believe with, with every fiber of my being that if anyone is able to break free from this sickness, with their hands into the air, it is us. So let's make it so. Thank you very much. <laughs>